Shri Mataji here. So thank you so much for coming. Hey, 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 you drove all the way from Maryland to come. Thank you so much. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Vashatya Desha Tarine Vancha Kalpataru Gesha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Marama, Hare Hare. Uh, one thing I forgot to announce, actually, which is very important. Today's class is a little bit different. Prabhuji will give class. After the class, there will be question answer, but the questions will be asked by Prabhuji and we have to answer. <laughs> so please pay attention during the class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. You can move a little bit up so, so that more okay. devotees are coming. Actually, some of them are late. So that we can squeeze them a little bit. So, I thank all of you for coming here today evening. And the topic might seem a little strange. I'll explain. Screen what appears on your inner screen. Screen means to evaluate. Like we have a screening exam who should come in, who should not come in. So screen refers to also a monitor. In the Bhagavad Gita's 15th chapter, Krishna talks about how the mind works. Is it on? Okay. Am I audible behind? Okay. So in the Bhagavad Gita's 15th chapter, Krishna... It's not on actually. Okay, now it is on. Okay. Mm. So in the 15th chapter, 8th, 9th, 10th verses, he talks about how the mind functions. Shrotram chakshu sparshanam cha, rasanam ghranam eva cha, adhishthaya manashchayam, vishayan upasevate. It's not working. We can use this one. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is it better now? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, Krishna is saying we have these five senses, the Shrotra, the ears, Chakshu, eyes, nose, tongue, skin. And from all these inputs come to the mind. Adhishta, Yamanash, Chayam, they all come to the mind. And Vishayan, Upasevate, the soul pursues enjoyment based on whatever inputs come to the mind. So to understand what this verse is saying, let's consider a high security building which has five doors, five entry uh, entries to it. And each of these entries has a CCTV camera over there. And there is a security center where there is the in charge who is sitting. And there's a big monitor with five windows in it. And each window shows what is happening at each door. And the windows are all there, which are of a small size, all open. 
and whenever the security engineer sees somebody suspicious, immediately presses the window and that zooms up. Zooms up, okay, you can see more clearly what is happening over here. So like that, our mind is like that big monitor. And in that, there are these five windows. So from each of the senses, a window is coming, there's a screen over there on which these five windows are there. So right now, we're all speaking. I, I'm speaking, you are hearing. If suddenly, say the fragrance of a delicious halwa starts coming into this room, then as soon as that fragrance comes in, on our mind screen, the smell window will zoom up. And as soon as the smell window zooms up, then, oh, it's halwa. Is it there for everyone or is it only for some people? When will I get it? Who must have made it? It's tasting so good. It's smelling so good. So what happens? As soon as that window gets zoomed, then that's what we start thinking about. And we may be in the class, but we are not in the class. So what has happened? Whichever window zooms, that's where our consciousness goes. And this capacity of the mind to focus on different things is vital for our day-to-day -day functioning also. So right now, we are, see, you are hearing the class, but at the same time, you'll be aware. Okay, if somebody's walking up the stairs, somebody's walking down the stairs, maybe somebody's uh, uh, moving their hands, doing something, we'll be aware, but these are not very significant stimuli. So, just like, one window may be zoomed up and then the other windows which are small. We are aware what is happening but we don't focus on it. So similarly, for us, the mind's window is, all the, the, the monitor rather, is always active. That's the screen, always something or the other is appearing. Now for this screen to help us in our functioning, what should maximize on it is that which is important for us. If something unimportant starts getting maximized over it. So a student is studying for an exam. And then as they're studying, maybe they're reading something on a computer. And at that time, suddenly a notification comes. You got a message from your friend. And then as soon as it pops up, it has popped up on the computer, on the computer screen. Similarly, the idea pops up in our mind. Hey, maybe I should see this. And then as soon as I see it, I start thinking, okay, maybe I should see it. And then before it zooms on our computer, it zooms in our mind. Oh, you must see this. What is the message? If it's something urgent, you must know about it. And then as it fills the screen, we can't think of anything else. And we click on that external window and that pops up. So for us, in our mind, if something unwanted zooms up, that can distract us. So we may be talking with someone and suddenly we remember something. That means we are talking with them, but some other window has zoomed up over there. Now when different things zoom up on the inner screen, it is not just an image that zooms up. It's an image initially, but that image soon becomes a movie. What does that mean? Image becomes a movie. That means, now say we don't like some person. And then we are talking with someone else. Nicely the conversation is going on. But suddenly we hear that person's voice. We don't like. And as soon as that sound comes in to our ears, then on that screen, what happens? What we are talking, the other person no longer remains. Somebody else comes up. This person comes up whom we hate, whom we dislike. And then all the thoughts associated. No, this person did this, this person did this, this person did this. It just starts off completely and we get carried away with it. In general, when some thought comes up within us, we very easily identify with it. Suppose somebody is watching a TV. Suppose there's a uh, the person is watching a TV on which a cricket match is going on and completely engrossed in watching the match. And say at that time, a thief sneaks into the house. And a thief comes and thief looks around and sees, oh, this TV, it's, it's uh, something to steal. That person picks up the TV, TV and starts stealing it. 
and the person is watching is so caught in watching instead of stopping the thief he walks along and continues watching <laughs> so like that no what happens for us is bhogaishwarya prasaktanam taya apaharita chetasam vyavasayatmika buddhi samadhau na vidhiyate in 2.44 in the bhagavad gita krishna says that our consciousness gets abducted apaharita just like the tv get gets stolen our consciousness gets abducted by what our attachments prasaktana whatever it is that we are attached to to wealth to sense enjoyment that attachment abducts our consciousness and we don't even notice it we let it get abducted sabadhau na vidhiyate our focus our concentration doesn't come now when this zooming is happening at that time if we are careful if we are observing carefully then you know okay this something just come on this do i really want to think about it or do i don't want to think about it so oh, if i decide i don't, don't want to think about it i can stop it i can stop it you know in the if we don't if we don't recognize that this inner screen is not me this inner screen is just something is being displayed for me to respond to basically for us there is stimulus and there is response say for example if i touch my hand over here and say there's a electric current going through this i touch it immediately my hand moves off so the stimulus of the electric shock going through my hand it causes a response of my hand moving away this is a instinctive response now this instinctive is good for me it protects me so there is a stim the stimulus and there is a response and in some cases the stimulus and the response are so rapidly tied to each other that we don't even notice it one thing leads to the another thing immediately so now this is not always a this, this can be a very good thing if somebody is say driving a plane and they start noticing that some panel reading is wrong they just notice it immediately they will take action we slow down the plane if they are about to take off stop the plane from taking off exactly what is observing so they may not, when instincts are strong then actions happen even without needing conscious thought so somebody who is good somebody is a good horse rider and as soon as the horse starts going off track immediately they bring him on track it's instinctive so there is stimulus and there is response now the stimulus comes at the physical level say then it has to be reflected on the internal mind if it does not come on the mind then it will distort us what will happen is we don't respond to the external situations we respond to our mental representations of the external situations we respond to the mental representations of external situations that means if we are going through a desert and we see a mirage now actually there is no water over there there is only sand but the the external situation is sand the mental representation is water and when that mental representation is if we respond oh, let me go there and take water so we in general don't respond to reality we respond to our perception of reality or our minds representation of reality and that the mind is distorting the reality we don't even perceive that most of the time say in a sports like cricket the cricket match is going on and there are commentators who comment and the purpose of the commentators are to explain okay this is what is happening this is what is happening this is how things are going this is what should be done next or this is what should not be done so basically the commentators are meant to make the game more accessible and enjoyable for the spectators but suppose now sometimes it happens that the bore game is very boring and the commentator start now discussing about something else only 
the commentators are in their own world and the game is in the entirely different. So like that sometimes there is something happening in life but our mind is making some different comments. So what is happening on the inner screen, a wide variety of things are coming which have nothing to do with the external situation. Or sometimes they may have something to do but it is a distorted perception. That means if the commentator who is reporting what is happening, that person starts saying, oh, you know, this team is going, it is India-Pakistan match is going to come, India is going to lose this match. You know, from this situation, there is no way to win. It's a grim situation. And then, what, the batsman is batting well. He's batting, no, he's just one last person. As soon as he gets out, the match is over. He's batting well. He's going on batting well. No, just one ball. He gets out, everything is over. Now that the, the, the mood which the commentator is commenting may be at variance with what actually is happening on the field. So ideally the commentator should be a reporter and an analyzer. Uh, commentator should not be a biased person. But our mind is a very biased commentator. So whatever happens, the mind gives its own spin to it. And based on its spin, we respond to it. It's like it's almost like if we are if we are just hearing a radio or watch or reading the commentary of a cricket match. I say sometimes if, you, if the tel if we are seeing the TV, then we are seeing the cricket match and we are also hearing the commentary. But if it's a radio or it's a written, then we are not seeing it at all. All that we are getting is the commentator's version. So for us. Most of the times, it is like that. Now, we don't perceive reality at all. We perceive the reality as, as, as filtered by the mind, as commented by the mind. And because of this, we don't act in response to reality. So, in the Bhagavatam, there is the story of Daksha Prajapati. And Daksha Prajapati, he, in the fourth canto, he felt that Shiva had dishonored him. And because Shiva had dishonored him, so he felt averse to Shiva and Shiva's wife. Now, Sati was his own daughter. Now, when Sati came to uh, their house, Daksha's house, for a, which is her, her own house, for a celebration, she felt, this is my own house. This is my father, this is my mother, these are my sisters. But for Daksha, he saw Sati not as his daughter, he saw her as the wife of the man who had disrespected him. So he was, he was not, yes, that is the reality that she is the wife of Shiva. Now, whether Shiva has disrespected him or not, that's a different issue. But still, the point is that he was responding not to her, he is responding to her mind, his mind's comment oh, this is the wife of the man who disrespected you and therefore in order to disrespect him you should disrespect her you should disrespect her they completely neglected her she felt terribly hurt but he didn't care and eventually he offered no sacri play no sacrifice to shiva she felt very angered and insulted by that and she was ready to give up her life Normally, a parent has to go through so many struggles to take care of the child. And the parents, they love their child and often they love their child more than their life. But here, in front of his own eyes, his own daughter was ready to give up his life, but he did not feel anything. Why? Because he was not responding to reality. His mind was telling, no, this person, I don't care for her. Why should I care? So we don't respond to reality. We respond to our mind's reporting of reality. And it's not a reporting. It's a distorted reporting. It's a commentary. So basically, I use two examples till now. One is of the inner screen and the second is the commentary. So the screen examples focus is on what appears in our consciousness. The screen example is, say if somebody is an alcoholic, then for the alcoholic, say if this is their home, this is their office, when they start going by towards the office, I should drink, I should drink, I should drink. The thought of that drink 
just fills the inner screen and once it fills the inner screen they just can't do anything else just can't think of anything else they can't do anything else and and not only there is a bottle of alcohol the mind is the inner screen is filled with that but like a tv screen it doesn't just give us an image it also gives a sound so like that the mind is also hey this is so enjoyable how can you go? don't give it up just have it now and not later now now immediately so i'm going to the office go to the bar so the mind it gives us certain images to respond to and it gives certain commentary because of which we just get carried away and it happens to all of us in different situations in different ways at we plan to act in one particular way but suddenly something pops up in our mind and the whole perception changes the whole attitude changes the whole emotion changes so what is appearing on the inner screen we need to recognize that and evaluate it so screen what appears on the inner screen means that evaluate in the 14th chapter of the bhagavad gita krishna talks about becoming an observer of our emotions so he says that prakasham ch pravrittim ch moham eva ch pandava द्वेष्टि संप्रवृत्तानी प्रकाश प्रवृत्ति मोह द्री ब्रॉड मोड प्रकाश रेफर्स टू गुडने प्रवृत्ति रेफर्स टू पैशन मोह रेफर्स टू इग्नोर so generally each of these modes has its characteristics in the mode of goodness there is first contemplation and then action i think and then i act in the mode of passion there is first action and then contemplation so some people speak to express their thoughts and some people speak to discover their thoughts so they speak hey i didn't mean to speak that <laughs> so what happens how many of you have experience of a slip of tongue a slip of tongue yeah all of us practically you know sometimes this thing the tongue slips and we don't even realize it has slipped we speak something and only after hey, when we say that oh i shouldn't have said that but sometimes we realize it so basically what happens is that in the mode of passion there is a forced towards action i have to do this i have to do this and in the mode of ignorance there is neither action nor contemplation simply illusion so krishna says all these different attitudes will come within us when this sometimes i feel like doing things sometimes i feel like thinking and analyzing sometimes i feel like just doing nothing so when this comes just see that they are coming they will stay there for some time they'll go away udasi navadasi nam be situated as if detached so here what he is saying screen screen whatever is appearing inside you so it's interesting that krishna is telling us we we want to become observers of the outer world we normally observe okay who has come who has gone if we come to a program if we expecting is this person come has this person not come okay how is this person dressed how is this person looking so we observe all these things krishna is saying just as we observe the outer world observe the inner world when you observe the inner world okay now anger is coming into me now boredom is coming into me now loneliness is coming into me so are all various emotions what happens is that if i just if that all oh, you know you are so lonely nobody cares for you i was with a friend who is a suicide counselor he told me that sometimes people commit suicide for such frivolous reasons this is there was a woman she called her lover and her lover did not respond to her phone she called him four five times he did not respond and just because he did not respond to her call she tried to commit suicide hmm, what is this? what so what is the mind telling oh you know he didn't respond to your phone call he doesn't love you you are unloved you know unloved and you will never be loved by anyone you are alone you are always stay alone 
you'll be miserable your life is going to be filled with misery why live such a life just end your life so somebody not responding to a phone call it's a it's a not a major catastrophic event but from that the mind can interpret in such a way it just takes off its story in a completely crazy way so there is stimulus and there is response now normally if we call someone the and they don't respond the stimulus okay that stimulus is they're not responded our response may be we may be annoyed we may be irritated but if we don't catch the mind then it will just carry on carry on carry on carry on so krishna talks about is dhyayato vishayan pumsah so dhyayato it in 2.62 63 he talks about this what happens is the contemplation is coming from the some stimulus is coming from outside we observe it and we get carried away by it dhyayato vishayan pumsah sangaste shupajayate sanga is attachment and then so i see it i think about it sanga hey that's nice sang Sangaste shu pajayate, and then sangat sanjayate kam. I want it. Kama craving it becomes. Kama at krodho bijayate. Krodha is who says I can't have it. Krodha bhavati sam moha. I forget why I should not take it. Suppose say I got diabetes, and I should not take any sweets, but then I see a sweet. Hey, that's nice. I want it. Who says I can't have it? Krodhat bhavati sammoha. Sammoha. I start get completely deluded. Delusion means I can't think of what is right or wrong. Sammoha smuti vibrama. Then I forget. Oh, last time when I ate sweet item, it caused me so much trouble. Smuti brama shad buddhi nasho. When the memory is forgotten, when the memory is lost, then the intelligence is destroyed. And then somebody may just eat, 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 and then. A lot of sweets, and they may be hospitalized because of that. So at one moment they may have decided I'm not going to eat sweets, but after five minutes down they may eat so many sweets that they have to be hospitalized. So what has happened? It's like you know, I was uh, when I come when I travel from one place to another place. Usually, uh, in a, when I find the airport, I land. There's a wheelchair assistant who takes me from the plane till the pickup point. So at one time. uh this wheelchair assistant uh he uh, sometimes people what happens is they are uh, they are always on their phones now i sit on the wheelchair i sit on the wheelchair i don't have much to do so i usually respond to messages or read something so at that time i was memorizing a verse uh from the bhagavatam and as i was doing that so what happened was this uh, there was somebody crossing by so this wheelchair assistant stopped and then i, I was also just reading and then that person passed And my wheelchair started moving, and then I thought I didn't notice anything. I was just reading, 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 and then suddenly I heard a scream, and everyone was pointing towards me. I said, "What have I done?" And then I noticed that there was no wheelchair assistant behind. <laughs> <laughs> What had happened was the floor was inclined, and the wheelchair just started moving, and he was there, and he was texting something on his phone. <laughs> And then, fortunately, some the wheelchair did not move very fast. So some like fifty percent came and really stopped the wheel. <laughs> so what happens is, if we are not attentive, and if there is slope, it will just go on. So neither I was attentive nor he was attentive. <laughs> so I was caught in something else. He was caught in something else. Then we just went off. So like that, our thoughts sometimes just go off. And at one moment, we may be happy. And the next moment, just be furious. So what has happened? We just one thought comes in the inner screen, and the mind starts getting giving some commentary, and you just go along with it, go along with it. When we have very strong mood swings, what is happening is that mood. Why do the mood swings happen? There can be various reasons, specifically, but generically, it is just that the the some thought comes in the mind. And we just get carried away with the thought, and as soon as we get carried away, oh, this is like this, this is like this, this is like this, this is like this, and then the result of that is the person becomes completely in a different frame of mind. A student may be going for exam prepared, yes, 
I'm going to prepare for this exam. I'm well prepared. But suddenly the thought comes, you know, what if you can't answer the questions? What if you can't answer? You'll get poor marks. What if you fail? If you fail, then what face will you show to your parents? What face will you show to the world? What will be your career? Your name, everybody will make fun of you. Oh, oh no. And just they're going for one moment, they're going for the exam. And next moment, they may be having panic attack. It just, uh, mind's movie can just, what happens, appears in the mind can just completely carry us away. And this happens especially during chanting. <laughs> One devotee asked me recently, he says, when we are chanting, why does our mind wander so much? I told him, because we are not chanting. He says, the tongue is chanting, the mind is wandering, and we are thinking what to do. <laughs> <laughs> the tongue is chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, the mind is chanting, this, this, this. And what happens is we have to choose. The soul is at the spiritual level. The soul has to choose. Do I focus on the sound of the holy name or the mind? And the mind's movie seems to be much more entertaining. To just get carried away with the mind's movie. So chanting which is meant for concentration is often the time of the most distraction. We consider our whole day. Sometimes at the time of chanting only we are most distracted. Because at that time, the mind starts playing its movie and generally if something requires our attention, if that lack of attention is going to have some immediate serious consequence, then we pay attention. Say if you are driving through a crowded road, if you are driving through a crowded road, then somebody is coming from here, somebody is coming from there. Then at that time, we are very attentive. We are driving with a very clear road. Then what happened? We feel like, it's just driving. We may not even pay much attention. In, in America, normally, you never blow a horn. If you blow a horn at someone, it's considered almost like a disrespect. Unless the person has made some serious mistake, you don't blow a horn. If you drive in India, every car has written, horn, please. <laughs> Why is that? No, the idea is, at least blow a horn, don't hit me. <laughs> Because the traffic is so unpredicted, so now if the road is very if the road is very unpredictable, that also causes anxiety. If the road is very clear, that also cause that also is a source of problem because we become inattentive. So when at the physical level attention is required, otherwise there will be some serious consequence. Then we force ourselves to focus on the physical level. Okay, if I if I drive a little wrong, I'll hit someone. So I have to focus. But when at the physical level, there appears to be no serious consequence, then we just get carried away by the mental level. Just go off with, uh, if we are driving on a clear road, we just start thinking of this, thinking of that, thinking of that. Many times if you have driven, sometimes you start off from your home, you go towards the office, and then by the time you reach office, you don't remember anything about the drive. Because the mind was somewhere else. And if, there's, if it's a well-known road and there's not much unpredict, unexpected things happening in traffic, we just go along. So now what happens? In chanting, at the physical level, there is nothing that is going to go wrong if you don't pay attention. So when the mind starts playing its movie, there is very little impetus for us to focus. Now, of course, when you're focusing on chanting, we're not focusing on the spiritual, physical level. The holy name of Krishna is spiritual. But it is being uttered through the physical tongue. It's a physical sound vibration. So basically the physical takes us to the spiritual. So we need to hear the sound of the holy name. But we don't do that because the mind has its own movie going on. Now, <clears throat> when, the earlier I gave the example that if the traffic is very dense and if there is some serious consequence of my being inattentive, then I, I become attentive. So even if, say we are talking, if we are driving and somebody says, somebody starts speaking something to us. Say, let's talk later. No, let's talk later. Why? That input is coming, but we decide, no, I will not process it right now. So, just as we, we can say, okay, we'll talk, but later. Similarly, we have the capacity to process the inputs that come in our inner screen. And this capacity is vital for us to function effectively. If whatever appears on our inner screen, we just start watching it, get carried away by it, we will get diverted from reality and we may get ourselves into trouble. So generally speaking, 
there are two broad mental health problems that people have situation in the world is so bad that according in the western world psychologists say that one out of every four persons will contemplate suicide during some time during their life and two weeks they'll be seriously considering suicide as an option because they'll not do it many some will some will not but there is so much negativity so much distress at the mental level that is then a suicide is basically a excellent example of the mind attacking the body not just attacking the body the mind destroying the body now what exactly happens when somebody commits suicide in general it is not people who are extremely poverty stricken some of them may commit suicide but most of the people who commit suicide it is not that life uh, they are physically deprived of needs and that's why they are committing suicide okay. it sometimes there is a relationship breakup is there sometimes there is job loss is there sometimes some other challenges there some bad thing has happened in their life but that bad thing doesn't have to cause the end of their life but essentially what happens as i said this is a, this is the soul this is the mind this is the body and the physical reality so now some bad thing happened at the physical level mm-hmm. now when bad thing happened after that the mind sometimes just goes into the past or it goes into the future mm-hmm. when the mind starts replaying the past oh this went wrong this went wrong this went wrong that causes negativity in one way when the mind starts going into the future this may go wrong this may go wrong this may go wrong that causes negativity in another way there are two major mental health problems which people suffer in general and which if not addressed can even lead to much more serious problems one is anxiety and various disorders related to anxiety the other is depression in a sense depression and anxiety are close competitors who will hurt people most both of them are causing problems now if you look from this perspective of screen what appears on the inner screen depression is caused when the inner screen keeps replaying the past oh you know this person left me this person ditched me this person betrayed me this happened like this this happened like that this happened like that so the past keeps being replayed again and again and again and again when that happens then we start thinking oh the future is going to be the same past being repeated again and again and we become depressed and when the inner screen starts displaying the future oh this this may go wrong that may go wrong that may go wrong that may go wrong then we get anxiety and in this way anxiety and depression both result when we don't screen what appears on our inner screen whatever appears we get carried away with it but if you can just say well okay that thing happened in the past but that doesn't necessarily mean but what is happening right now right now there is no problem but if we get caught with that we'll be lost so this whole class till now has been about how the mind misleads us now how do we deal with this how do we uh, re- deal with the problem how do i learn to screen what appears on the inner screen broadly speaking for this we need to <clears throat> recognize that we are different from the mind we are not the screen we are the observer of the screen and whatever comes on the screen will not affect us unless we let it affect it so the process of bhakti yoga helps us understand that we belong to a different reality that we are souls who are parts of krishna and to the extent it's like say a child is watching a movie i say it's a horror movie child is just playing at one moment came uh, hug the mother and was happy child sits down and starts watching the horror movie i starts watching the horror movie starts trembling crying screaming now if at that time mother comes and touches the child 
Now the child is so much in the horror movie, child thinks the monster in the horror movie is So then the mother also can't help the child. So now the child is actually safe. But as long as the consciousness is caught in the horror movie, the child is scared. Similarly, the Bhagavad Gita described in 13.22 Purusha Prakriti Stohi Bhungte Prakriti Jan Gunan Karanam Guna Sangosya Sad Asad Yoni Janmasu says the soul's consciousness gets caught in material nature. And that's how it experiences good and bad, happiness and distress. So now when we are chanting, when you are practicing bhakti, what the child who is watching the horror movie is getting horrified. It's like we are like that child. And what we are trying to do is, we are trying to touch the hand of our mother. Krishna, help me. So if we chant Krishna's name, if we remember Krishna, we understand that my identity is different. I am not what is happening. What is happening on the is good horror movie, it's not happening to me. I am different. Now sometimes we may be very agitated and we may not be able to consciously think about this. But sometimes we are very agitated and we go to the temple and some nice kirtan is going on or some nice darshan is there. And as we start observing that, start taking the input, suddenly you start feeling calm. Calmness starts coming in. Now why has this calmness come? At one moment the mind was agitated, now it has become calm. We may not analytically understand it, but what is happening? The child is connecting with the mother. Oh, I'm safe. So to the extent we learn to hold on to Krishna, we make it a habit to hold on to Krishna, to that extent we access a secure reality different from whatever is happening on the inner screen. And ultimately, if we make it a habit of taking shelter of Krishna, if we make it a habit, yes, I have to somehow or the other always take shelter of Krishna. Then, whenever the mind gets agitated, the various things are appearing on the inner screen, immediately we will start chanting Krishna's names, we will we'll look at some darshan picture of Krishna, we will recite some verses, we will hear some lecture. Then we will calm down. We will calm down. So for us, in general, we can deal with the mind in two ways. One is through analysis and through devotion. Sometimes devotion comes first, analysis comes later. Sometimes analysis comes first, devotion comes later. In the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna talks about how to control the various uh, anarthas that are there in the mind, he says, evam buddhe param buddhva samsthabhyatmanam atmana jahishatrum mahabaho kamarupam durasadam So he says, intelligence directed towards transcendence. evam buddhe param buddhva with your intelligence, understand that you are transcendental. You are not the body, you are the, not the senses, you are not the mind. Samsthabhi atmanam atmana Situate yourselves on the spiritual platform. Jahi shatrum mahabaho In this way, you will become peaceful. You will be able to conquer over your inner enemies. So for us, sometimes we may just be anal Sometimes say, uh, suddenly we are we going through life normally, suddenly start, we find ourselves worrying. We may analyze, ah, you know, this thought came over here. And from this thought, everything started to trigger. I was going through normal life and suddenly I heard, oh, my friend was fired. My friend was fired. What if I am fired? Oh, you know, if I lose my job, this will happen, that will happen, that will happen. I just go to my office, I'm in a cheerful mood. And suddenly I see a strange look in my boss's eyes. Is my boss planning to fire me? Oh, no, if he fires me, what will I do? How will I pay the mortgage of my house? If I can't pay the mortgage, I'll be evicted. Oh, if I, where will I stay? I'll be on the streets. I'll be in the streets, it's so cold. Right now, we may be cold because it's AC. But our minds are imagining, oh, you'll be out in the streets and you'll be cold. <laughs> so what happens over here is, the mind has got carried away. So sometimes, we might just be able to catch it. And, hey, this is what is happening. No. So we can analyze and then, Oh, instead of focusing on this image, what is coming on the screen, let me focus on Krishna. We chant the holy names, we remember the philosophy. <sighs> we'll calm down. Sometimes, 
the devotion comes first, the analysis comes later. Krishna says that if you take shelter of me, Dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayanti te. Sometimes so Krishna says, you cultivate a devotional attitude, then I will give the intelligence to how to make good decisions. So earlier he said, use your intelligence, then you will come to me. Hmm? So he says, later on also, so both ways it works. So either we take shelter, normally uh, the process of bhakti is about connecting with Krishna. We can connect with Krishna by calling out to him. We connect with Krishna by using our intelligence guided in his service. Either way, when we do it, we'll find that we will be able to resist the mind. So the process of bhakti at one level may seem just, uh, okay, I'm chanting, I'm going to the temple, it's all nice, but I have this worry, I have this problem, I have this, 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 that. So what is happening is, Bhakti just becomes another activity in our life. But the purpose of Bhakti is not just to be another activity in our life. Purpose of Bhakti is, is to transform all the transform how we do all our activities. So our Bhakti should be able to give us the ability to screen what appears on our inner screen. If, if chanting is just a ritual, if going to temple is just a ritual, we'll do that nicely, but we will find ourselves still, our mind will still be like a uh, TV on which all kinds of things are appearing, any commentary is happening and fear will be there, anger will be there, resentment will be there, envy will be there, loneliness will be there, all this will be there. But when we understand that bhakti is meant to equip me and we practice intelligence to understand how the mind is working, then we'll find that we'll become much, much more peaceful. We'll be able to do everything in our life uh, much more positively. So when it is said, Bhakti is susukam kartu maugaya. Bhakti is joy. Is it that what that means is that it's uh, when we are performing Bhakti, if we understand what the purpose of this is, so the opportunity for me to connect with Krishna. Then we'll be able to connect with him in a positive way. We'll be able to detach ourselves from our external situations. And, and even our internal, whatever is coming in the mind, we will detach ourselves. So I'll conclude with one incident of what it means to, how bhakti can help us to screen what appears on our inner screen. Last year, when I came to America, uh, in fall, I had gone to I had gone to Vrindavan just before I came to America, and then I came to America. I came to the Denver airport, and I was uh, going through security, and suddenly, like a huge security alarm came, up. and suddenly I found there were like six armed policemen pointing their guns at me. Said, what happened? So one of them said that actually your uh, your crutches they have given a high explosive alert. So I said, because of that, we'll have to frisk you now. And they took me to a separate room. And I said, oh, see crutches, there's nothing in the crutches. He said, no, there is a, there is a heavy explosive over there. So then, then, and now I was already a little late. I had to go, the wheelchair assistant had not come on time. So I was thinking I had to go get to the plane, but now it is getting further late. So as we went through, at that time, suddenly, uh, so I said, this person said that, you know, we, we'll have to break the crutches because we have to find out what is this. I said, if you break the crutches, how will I walk? I asked him, that's not my problem. He just said that. <laughs> so now, initially I was just annoyed that I was a little apprehensive. Now I was alarmed. Said, this is becoming a very really serious thing. Now, somehow, I love to recite Bhagavad Gita verses. So, I sometimes just I keep reciting verses in the mind. So at that time, somehow from somewhere, this 18.61 came in my mind. Ishvara Sarva Bhutanam, Ruddeshe Arjuna Tishtati, Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani, Yantra Rudani Mayaya. And Krishna says, I am guide, guiding the wanderings of all living beings. So the, the, the verse I was reciting in the mind, suddenly it struck me. You know, I have traveled to so many places. Through it all. Oh, sorry. Hare Krishna.
इट्स नॉट वर्क हरे कृष्णा सो कुछ भी नहीं सुनाई दे रहा था आपको ओके हरे कृष्णा ओके हरे कृष्णा यू हैव द हैंड माइक यू यूज़ अदर वाइज हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे आई थिंक इट्स इनर स्क्रीन गोस समवेयर टू डट इट इज स्लैम इट टू क्लियर इट स्टार्ट ओके सो एनीवे सो आई स्टार्टेड रिसाइटिंग दिस वर्स सडनली सडनली आई गोन थ्रू सो आई गोन थ्रू सो मेनी प्लेसेस सो मेनी जर्नीज then at so many places so many things could have gone wrong krishna has guided me through it all i said i think is i know actually i'm a soul i've gone through so many lifetimes you know after we die we don't even know where we're going when we go from one place to another we know where we're going but krishna has guided me through it all so krishna will guide me through this also i thought like i just calm down and i just krishna has surrendered to you I was I was thinking like this, thinking of Krishna, focusing on Krishna, just brought some calmness. And at that time, suddenly, another security person came. He says, "What is going on here?" So I said, "You know, we found high alert explosive." He looked at me. He says, "Why are you troubling him?" He says, "No, if the, the he says the crutches are having the problem." Then he looked at the crutches, and I also looked at it. And that time, it struck me. It is just like when f- fear can paralyze the intelligence. He says, "The ch- crutches are openable. You can open them." <laughs> 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 the simple thing, but it didn't strike me at that time. And then they opened the crutches, and they were opening it in front of me. And they saw something. You know, there was some dirt over there. He says, "What is this?" He says, "That's that's dirt." He says, "What is what is it doing here?" They are pulling out the dirt, and they pull out quite a good amount of dirt came over there. And then they said, they took it and they put it in their machine. It's just dirt. So they said, "He says, mm, he just gave the crutch back to me." He said, "When you go back, clean the scratches." <laughs> <laughs> so what had happened was, before I had gone to America, I had gone to Rundavan, and I had gone to the banks of Jamuna. So at that time, the rubber padding that was there on my scratches, that had come off, that had gone worn out, and I had replaced the rubber padding. But during the intervening period, the the dust of Rundavan. <laughs> that had gone inside the crutches <laughs> and there is on the yamuna there is a lot of contamination that is there so soil nearby is also contaminated so that had high metal content <laughs> so the explosive was actually the raja raja <laughs> 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 so yes raja raja is actually explosive then to explode all our attachments explode all our illusions in the material world but the point is that actually at that time just it is one moment i was normal after a few minutes i was panicky and so i just remembered that verse and things calmed down thought that i consciously thought and recollected somehow it just happened so for us so situation like this may not be so dramatic in the physical sense of life in the physical sense but in the mental sense it can just be that dramatic our mind we just be taking us off on a horror movie we just remember krishna Krishna is there with me. He'll take care of you. Calm down. Even if people have dealt with us badly, even if bad things have happened, even if we ourselves have committed mistakes, you know, Krishna is still with us. Krishna will take care of us. So, to the extent we practice bhakti, not just as a ritual, but as a spiritual activity to take to connect with Krishna, and we make it a habit to connect with Krishna, to that extent, we will not get carried away by whatever appears on our inner screen. and to that extent we will be able to protect ourselves so in the same 14th chapter krishna initially talks about again gone isn't it yeah. that's interesting oh it's come back <laughs> mm. so krishna talks about first becoming an observer in buddhism and in yoga circles this is called a sakshi bhav observer i also talked about being an observer that's 14.22 23 But that chapter Krishna ends fourteen point twenty six with not sakshi bhav but seva bhav. Maam chayo abhyabhichare na bhakti yoga na sevate sagunan samati chaitan Brahma bhuya ya kalpate. And if you become become fixed in devotional service, then the modes will be able to transcend them. Krishna says. So for us, if we see bhakti as a means of connecting with Krishna, not just connecting with Krishna. 
but making it a habit of connecting with Krishna. Then, whenever a stimulus comes, something stimulus which causes us fear, and our response will be to become fearful. But if we have made it, a, if we have made it a habit of connecting with Krishna, then whatever stimulus comes, we'll immediately take shelter of Krishna, and then that shelter of Krishna will change our response. Rather than being carried away with the inner screen, we will screen the inner screen, and then choose to respond more appropriately, more intelligently. And by this, we'll find that a substantial amount of agitation in our life will just go down if we learn to screen what appears on our screen and our bhakti will thereby become joyfully performed. So I'll summarize what I spoke today. The topic was screen what appears on our inner screen. So I started by talking about how the 15.8 and 9 the Gita if there's an inner, there's a big screen on which five doors closed circuit TV input is coming in. Like that the mind is a big screen on which the inputs from the five senses are coming in. And the right window should zoom up so that we can function properly. But sometimes the wrong window zooms up and that can cause us to misfunction, malfunction. Now, so the inner window, inner, inner screen is the mind, we are the soul. And the outer world is what we are perceiving. Now, we don't respond to the outer world. We respond to the mental representation of the outer world. We don't see a desert. If on another screen, a mirage, a water appears, we chase after it. Sati was Daksha's daughter, but in his mind, she appeared as the wife of his, of his, uh, of his enemy, whom he saw basically. And he responded to that. So all of us, we can find our sometimes mood swinging. The mood swing because something appears on our inner screen and we get carried away with it. It's like a child who is happy at one moment and then starts watching a horror movie and becomes horrified. So, so like, it, there is like the wheelchair, I said, it started, it started moving and neither, nobody noticed it. So like that we just, uh, there is um, the mind, it, not, it not, doesn't, uh, doesn't just give an image, it gives a movie. Some image, if you focus on it, it just starts off a movie and just takes us somewhere else. And doesn't just give a movie, which is just a changing images, it also gives a commentary with it. The commentary is normally meant to explain better what is happening on the uh, field. But the mind's commentary sometimes disconnects us from the field completely. So somebody just doesn't pick up a phone call and I start thinking, you know, this person doesn't love me and I may become suicidal because of such a small thing. So the stimulus has to elicit a response. But if we get carried away by the mind's depiction of things, then a small stimulus can elicit a terrible response. Oh, we identify with the mind so much that we don't even notice where the mind is going. Like a person uh, watching a TV game and the TV is being stolen, that person keeps watching the game and goes all over it. So we need to learn to screen what appears on our inner screen. The, in generically, the mind, what it does is, if it goes towards the past, it puts us into depression. If it goes on into future, it puts us into anxiety. And suicide is basically where the mind is killing the body. So if we don't learn to screen what appears on the inner screen, the consequences can even be that serious. And how do we learn to screen? This is as a, through intelligence and through transcendence. In some cases, analysis can come first and then the devotion can come. Means we have our intelligence alert, we use our intelligence, hey, this is what is happening. My mind is carrying me away. So come, take shelter of Krishna. Or sometimes, if we just take shelter of Krishna, then the Dhami Buddhi Yogam, Krishna gives us the intelligence. Then we can deal with it. So sometimes bhakti can itself become a, a mechanical or ritual activity. And when that happens, okay. So okay, okay. So when bhakti <laughs> becomes a mechanical activity, then we will not be able to perceive or the change, the empowerment that comes to Bhakti. When we are chanting, I, unless we stay tuned to the holy name, chanting can be the time when the mind's movies distract us the most. So if you understand that this is the time when I have to connect with Krishna and raise my consciousness through the physical to the spiritual level, not get sidetracked by the mental level, then the chanting will become our default instinct. So whenever we feel fearful or negative, rather than uh, get, getting carried away, 
by it we will take shelter of krishna and we will learn how to respond so the bhagavad gita talks about sakshi bhav and seva bhav sakshi bhav is observing and analyzing seva bhav is serving so we can uh, we ultimately need the conviction that i am the servant of krishna i am meant to serve krishna if you just just like a child watching a horror movie getting carried away the child just catches hold of the mother ah, it's safe so if we catch hold of krishna then we'll find that we will be uh, with the mind's agitation will go down we will become much calmer and then we'll respond to external situations much better thank you very much hare krishna hare. any comments mata ji comments corrections any questions oh yes so why is it that suicide the younger generation kids sometimes because of academic pressure or other pressures mm -hmm. <laughs> you you were using another mic in your hand now choose it but it's the same one okay it needs shock treatment now okay so why do why are kids nowadays so vulnerable to committing suicide is it only happening here or is it happening everywhere broadly speaking it is happening everywhere when in india i was in iit i gave a talk and then the cryogenics uh, department professor had actually had come to meet me after that was talking about how they have serious problems there also in, in iit in india of people committing children kids committing suicide so broadly i would say that there are three three different factors over here okay one is that there is an overall trivialization of life itself because when we live uh, in a materialistic world at one level we want to enjoy life a lot but at another level hari krishna okay at another level the life is seen as meaningless we just live for some time and then we die and it's all over so when this world view is there and life has no ultimate meaning now most people are not are not aggressive materialists you know on materialists you can say there are fanatical materialists and there are functional materialists fanatical materialist means matter is all that exists they are pure devotees of matter hmm? whereas functional materialists are matter is all that matters so most people are functional materialists and at one level life life has no meaning so when life itself has no meaning then the result is that okay if life if i my life doesn't make sense to me it's just too much trouble let me end it so materialism actually causes trivialization of life that's one aspect to it the other aspect to it is material materialistic world view also makes every small thing appear to be very big so we start seeing life like a 100 meter sprint if i don't win it's all over but life is not actually like a 100 meter sprint it's like a 100 mile marathon when you fall back in one round it doesn't matter i can always pick up in the next round so when we when we make every single thing very important then every single thing that goes wrong that becomes catastrophic that is we catastrophize events uh, thirdly 
of course there could be many reasons third reason is broadly again not just we have materialistic world view we think that we are the controllers technology has given us so much control over externals that we feel i should be able to control things in my life and if i am not able to control i just can't digest it the the there are three modes goodness passion and ignorance in the mode of passion we overestimate our capacity to control now any problem is there some some, some the relationship problem is there i'll fix it you know we think the other person is like a fixable device i'll fix them so we overestimate our capacity to control in the mode of ignorance we underestimate our capacity to control oh you know i can't do anything people are like this only everybody treats me uh, like a dish rag nobody cares for me and it's always going to be like this so we go into self pity so basically most people when shila prabhupad came to america he said that rajastamo rajastamo gune era i think i just not use this thing can you come ahead if possible or you can hear from here i'll speak a little loudly rajastamo gune era sabai acha that everybody is covered by the modes of passion and ignorance so at one level we overestimate what i can do what i can control and then when i can't control then i i just go into the mode of ignorance oh i can't do anything in the mode of goodness we can estimate properly okay this is in my control this is not in my control and then we can respond realistically we can respond intelligently so at a immediate level what can we do to prevent this it's a the specific causes will have to be dealt with but uh, more important is basically specific causes means if somebody is having pressure there has to be uh, see the mind has a train of thoughts and as i said is that if the train of thoughts can carry us away so the thought of suicide comes in the mind let me do it let me do it let me do it and anyway, it end up doing it so if somebody has if people have at least some close friends to whom they can open then what happens the mind starts giving a train of thoughts do this do this do this do this they will share it with someone at least so trying to have a generally we look at everyone through our mind you know however somebody is behaving we perceive them through our mind if somebody is very nice with us then we start thinking what does this person want why is he so nice to me today isn't it so we evaluate through the filter of the mind but is there someone who is close enough to us that we evaluate our mind through them this is what they are this is what my mind is saying this is what they are saying so that, that so then that can save us from getting carried away by the train of thought of the mind so somehow now if people if somebody starts feeling that everyone is going to judge me then they can't trust that person they can't reveal what is going on in their heart to that person so we need to become we need to provide at least some person in each other's lives who will be non judgmental they accept us the way we are that doesn't mean that they will uh, that they will not inspire us to improve but they won't judge and condemn us they won't label us so if that kind of support is provided then when the mind's chain of thoughts are going in that direction they will confide they will reveal and then they can be helped so ultimately it's a more spiritual world view that has to be taken but immediately we have to get some way to give people an alternative story to what the mind is telling they get carried away with the mind story they will end up destroying themselves but if they have an alternative then ah i don't have to do this that's how they can be protected okay thank you any other questions or comments yes from question is like when there is distraction uh, as you said even in the hand power you can attack it so that you are you are really more conscious mm-hmm. uh, going around that direction so i'm trying to use that example even in chanting when the road is clear like there is no real conscious chanting happens so you know, is it a good thing that like should be you know, very distracted 
distracting mood or like not distracting mood, a distracted place. Um, okay, yeah. To be both. That's a good point. Actually, I did not address the issue. So the question is that when we have some distracting situation which needs physical attention, then we are forced to be attentive. Don't get carried away with the mind. So in chanting, what can we do? Generally, when we do th something because of three reasons. is attraction, conviction, or association. I like to do it, I feel like doing it, as attraction. As, uh, conviction is, whether I like it or not, this is important, I have to do it. Association is, oh, somebody else is watching me, I am expected to do this, let me do this. Somebody else is doing it nicely, let me do it. So basically, uh, the attraction in chanting is not consistent. It will be there sometime, it will not be there sometime. The Jiva Goswami says that, the, for the siddhas, for those who are purified, their buddhi, so their priti will keep them in bhakti. They love Krishna, so they will serve Krishna. But for the sadhakas, it is their buddhi, which will keep them in bhakti. So buddhi is important. That's why if we hear something about the importance of chanting, if we read something about the importance of chanting, that will inspire us to focus. So in general, it is good to uh, intellectually nourish ourselves before we chant. I mean, you know, just read some words about the glory of the holy name. Read some something about the importance of controlling the mind. Read something of purification. So something which gives us a conviction. And third is the association. So if somebody else is chanting, then we feel inspired. Okay, let me also chant attentively. So we have to, uh, we can't create a artificially a distracting situation because we will get distracted. As if the mind is distracted, and chanting does not have any immediate physical consequence, not doing it anything attentively. There is, of course, a consequence that we lose taste, but that is subtle, it is not immediate. So we have to create some stimuli, create some impetus through either of these attraction. So attraction you can stimulate maybe by having some pastime of Krishna, which we like, we keep a picture of that. There's a verse which we love about the holy name, maybe just recollect that. Decide that before chanting your japa. Uh, if we have some picture of the deity that we like, this is the Lord I am calling out. So we have to find out which will work, attraction, conviction or association. Ultimately, as we become purified, then the mind will get attracted to Krishna. But till then, we have to, we have to struggle. You know, bhakti as sadhaka is an effortful process. It will become effortless, but right now it is effortful. And then if you don't put in the effort, then we become a fool. You know, we don't do much. Okay. Thank you. There's a question behind. Yeah. So, anxiety and depression, uh, they come by itself or we are developing that thing. Okay, good question. Do anxiety and depression come by themselves or do we develop them? It's both ways. At one sense, uh, um, anxiety is just a result of living in a material world where there are many things that are not in our control. Anxiety is caused by uncertainty. So if I had to catch a flight and I'm not sure whether I'll reach on time or not, that's anxiety. So, and, uh, so in a sense, anxiety is unavoidable in this world. Because while functioning in this world, we need things to happen in a particular way. But whether they will happen or not is not in our control. So it is that uncertainty will lead to anxiety. But there is anxiety caused by uncertainty, but there is anxiety that is multiplied by the mentality. When the mind starts keep replaying, what happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? So the fear is just natural. And it's also in ways, many ways desirable. If a child is leaning from a 10-story building, Normally, if we lean from a 10-story building, we feel some fear. Now, if the child doesn't feel fear, the mother will feel great fear. I hey, come back. What are you doing? <laughs> so, fear is a natural and necessary uh, reaction to danger. And it protects us. Oh, don't do this thing. So, fear is not the problem. Fearfulness is the problem. Fearfulness means, I have come back. I am sitting peacefully at my home. 
But still I'm thinking, oh, I was peering down that 10 story building. What if I fell down? What if I died? So the danger is no longer there, but still it's playing again and again and again in mind. So, so basically for us, if we, we all have situations where there's uncertainty and we have to prepare to deal with them. But if we just keep uh, replaying the negative scenarios that may happen, then that will lead from fear to fearfulness. And that will lead, anxiety is just normal in life. But when it becomes an anxiety disorder, that means there's just excessive anxiety. So we do have to think about the problematic situations and plan how to deal with them. But the difference is that when we are in the mode of goodness, we are in control. It's like I said, talk about screen, what is it on the inner screen? It's like we take the screen and move it forward. Okay, if this happens, what can I do? I can do this, this, this. If this happens, I can do this, this, this. If this happens, I can do this, this. So when we are in control and we are directing our consciousness towards the future to analyze, to plan and prepare, that is good. If you do that, then the anxiety that is there, it will go down. Okay, I have some, I have some plans to deal with it, how to deal with it. But in the mode of ignorance, we are not in control. We just passively glued to watching the inner screen and the inner screen goes to the future. And then what happens? This will go wrong. This will go wrong. No, that's bad. This can also go wrong. No, that can also go wrong. It's like one negative scenario, second negative scenario, third negative scenario. Just seeing the negative scenarios without thinking of any solutions. So the point which I'm making is anxiety as a stimulus will come into us. But when we replay it, we make it into a habit. Yes. So how to stop replaying it? Just at that time, come back to the present. I have a full class on this, on how to deal with fear. I won't go into the full class, but this acronym I use, fear, F-E-A-R. F is focus. Focus means what is the, what is the what is the what is the exact problem now? Focus on the present. Mind is saying this, 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 this. But what is the exact problem now? Focus. Just start thinking, okay, you know, if I lose my job, this will happen. Okay, what is the exact problem right now? Okay, you know, I heard that my colleague was fired. What is the exact problem right now? The problem is I may be fired. What is the exact problem right now? Right now, actually, there's no problem. <laughs> or right now, the problem may be that I have to make sure that I do my job. If I may, if I do my job well, then I have done my part. So that, that's the second point. E is engage. Engage means what can I do about it right now? See, uh, I said the soul is here, the body is here, the mind is here. There is Jnanendriyas and Karmendriyas. Jnanendriya is knowledge acquiring senses. Karmendriya is the working senses. So now both of these are, they are meant to interact with the physical world. When we get into anxiety, that means the mind is just playing some picture and we are disconnected from both. But through these two questions, we are getting the Jnanendriya and the Karmendriya back into the present. Okay, what is wrong right now? What is the problem right now? Hmm? Get the gyan in there. Okay, analyze. Okay, observe. Then, what can I do about it right now? So, as soon as I engage, okay, you know, I can just start my work right now. So, as soon as you start doing this, as soon as you start engaging in some practical action, and the we don't we don't watch the minds movie so much, and then the anxiety goes down. Then, A is arise. Arise means that we need to raise our consciousness upwards that I am actually a spiritual being, I am a soul, I am a part of Krishna, I am indestructible. No matter what bad things happen in life, I as a soul can never be destroyed. So, I am a part of Krishna and Krishna is always going to be in the heart with me. Arise. So, this can be, so the first two are simply to get off the mind and bring to the physical reality. The next two are to take to the spiritual reality. Arise, I am a soul who is a part of Krishna. And R is release. Release means that which is not in my control, I let it go. Krishna, you take care of it. I entrust it to you. When we focus on Krishna, when we remember Krishna, 
then it's not just krishna was a historical figure thousand years ago krishna is the supreme lord who is in control right now also so normally in the materialistic world view we only think of two things things are in my control or things are out of my control but in the spiritual world view i understand that things that are out of my control are not out of control they are in krishna's control so i release it to krishna now release it uh, this release is not uh, not abandonment i let go of the things that are going on in my mind to focus on what i can practically do so if you do this just focus engage arise and release you'll find that the fear will go down substantially okay thank you any other questions or comments yes mata ji yeah So we hear all these things, also. so we try to remember and mentally accept these things. Hmm. Okay. So we keep uh, keep uh, hearing these things, but we keep forgetting those things. And yes. Get into those. Get into normal things. Yeah. So it's like you know, suppose. i am typing a letter typing a letter on my computer and somebody has pressed a delete button <laughs> i keep typing but things keep getting deleted sometimes it can appear like that to us that you now we hear so much we just keep forgetting but it's not like that actually just the hearing itself purifies because at least during the time of hearing we are connecting with krishna at the time of hearing we are coming in the sound presence of sound vibration that is describing krishna so that itself is purifying so even if we don't remember even one thing from what we have heard just the fact that we have heard will purify us and that will benefit us of course we would like to remember so generally one of the best ways to remember is to change our position from being a, st- a student to a teacher from being a recipient to a transmitter so decide every day if i every time i go for a class after i hear i will think of one point that i'll speak to someone if you can make it two three that's fine but as one point i want to speak this to someone so if we decide that then we will be hearing which point you know now if i'm going to speak some point let me speak the point that is a really good point isn't it so then we'll call what is a good point we'll be hearing the whole class attentively so sometimes if we have our own friend circle we might decide i'll make a whatsapp group and i will just send some or some uh, so uh, group and i'll just send a, every day or every week after a program i'll send a message over there what point i like so just that forces us to hear so if we change our role i am a student i will eternally be a student but i am also meant to be a teacher i meant to be share this message in the mood of service so just that will force us to remember more uh, that will force us to take it in more and remember more the third thing which we could do is that when we are uh, hearing at that time we, uh, we hear many things and it's just not possible that we can either remember everything or we can apply everything but if there is if there's something which we can apply and we don't have to necessarily decide that i have to apply this for the rest of my life because generally whatever we decide to do for the rest of my life we live it for the rest of our life <laughs> you know oh, i have to do it for the rest of my life i'll do it later just decide okay i learn something for the next one week i will do this even if after one week i stop it at least during that one week i learned i applied something and i will myself find whether this helps or not so the, the nature of the mind is that it uh, it just tends to magnify the problems so like if i have to carry a 1 kg weight i can easily carry but you tell me you have to carry this 1 kg weight for the rest of your life rest of your life i'll drop it right now only <laughs> so instead okay you just carry this for next 1 hour uh, okay 1 hour i can do it so like that if we if we take one application point which i'll apply for one week it may not be a big point but just that application will lead to some purification will lead to some transformation and that will inspire us 
either to continue applying that or sometimes we say okay i applied this is good but now i learned something i want to apply something else so it's not that uh, if we stop applying that's a failure it is that due and trying to have a carry home point will help us to remember and having a application point will help us to get the benefit also and we can make a finite application rather than a perennial application the finite if it is repeated it can become perennial also but we keep it finite so that the mind doesn't think of it as a bird does that answer your question so should we stop here are there any other questions okay yes what is the easiest way to reach krishna is it bhakti or seva she bhakti and seva are not separated shri prabhupa translated bhakti as devotional service by seva what do you mean exactly seva means offering our service okay so bhakti is internal seva is external so both have to go together tasmat sarveshu kaleshu maam anusmara yudhya cha मई अर्पित मनो बुद्धिर माम एवश्यस्य संशय कृष्ण सेज ऑलवेज रिमेंबर मी एंड एंगेज इन योर प्रिस्क्राइब ड्यूटी सो एट डिफरेंट टाइम्स इन आवर लाइफ वी मे बी एबल टू डू वन मोर देन द अदर समटाइम्स आवर माइंड मे जस्ट बी टू डिस्ट्रैक्टेड बट एट लीस्ट फिजिकली कीप डूइंग थिंग्स फिजिकली कीप डूइंग थिंग्स सो कायेन मनसा बुद्ध्या केवलै इंद्रियैरपि योगिना कर्म कुर्वन्ति संगम त्यक्त्वात्म शुद्धये दैट krishna says that with the senses with the mind with the intelligence sorry with the mind intelligence body and even the senses engage in devotional service so different acharyas explain this kevala indriya into different ways 5.11 in the bhagavad gita that it says that at least with the senses even if the mind is not there even if i am not concentrated at least chat but i don't feel like doing it at least go to the temple and bow down so that is at least do the external thing but uh, that will also purify and gradually the internal will come sometimes we act our way to the feelings and sometimes we feel our way to the actions that means sometimes i go to a temple i don't feel like like say dancing in kirtan or participating in kirtan i start doing it i raise my hands i sing and i start feeling like it i act my way to the feelings and sometimes we may feel our way to the actions that means and i just feel so happy i want to sing and i start singing my hands go up and i start dancing i start expressing bhakti so it is not that two are separated both are meant to be integrated but in some situations only one might be there sometimes we may want to go to the temple but there is some big work pressure which we can't avoid there is some family crisis which we can't avoid we are able to go to the temple but at least in our heart we can remember krishna that is, we are not being able to do it externally but at least we do it internally so basically our consciousness as i said the soul is here the mind is here the body is here so ideally the soul's consciousness will go through the mind through the body to krishna that means the soul mind and body all are engaged in krishna service that's why the the body refers to seva the mind refers to the bhakti but sometimes if the mind is too much inattentive or distracted at least the body should go towards krishna if we do the seva sometimes the body can't go towards krishna at least the mind go towards krishna so that way we keep moving our consciousness towards krishna okay thank you hare krishna shri prabhu pad ki gaur bhakta vrind ki sai gaur premanand thank you very much thank you so much prabhu for wonderful class and thank you everybody for listening um we also have uh, next program time is